Take your Bible this morning for our scripture reading, please, to Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7, please, for our scripture reading this morning. We are going to read verses 11 through 17. Verses 11 through 17 of Luke chapter 7. We'll begin together in verse 11. I'll read verse 12. We'll read 13 together. We'll alternate like that until we end together on verse 17 of Luke chapter 7. As our custom is, let's stand together to read the scripture, all of us standing to read God's word. Let's begin together on verse 11. Ready? And it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain, and many of his disciples went in with him, and much people. Now when he was come nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and much people of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her, and said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the buyer, and they that bear him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say to thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak, and he delivered him to his mother. And there came a fear on all, and they glorified God, saying, That a great prophet is risen up among us, and that God hath visited his people. And this rumor of him went forth throughout all Judea and throughout all the region round about. And let's pray. Father, add your blessing, please, to the reading of this portion of Scripture this morning. Thank you, Lord, already for the wonderful music this morning and the great singing by the congregation and for the special. And Lord, we're thankful for the good spirit that's in this place this morning. Thank you for people who love you and are in their place on a Sunday morning and desire to hear from you. And so, Lord, I pray that you would make our hearts ready to receive the truth from your word. Give us all ears to hear what you would say to us this morning. And I pray that you'd bless the special to help continue to make our hearts good ground that the word of God can fall into and bring forth fruit. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. strong in the Lord and be of good courage your mighty defender is always the same mount up with wings as the eagle ascending victory is sure when you call on his name be strong be strong be strong in the lord and be of good courage for he is your guide be strong be strong be strong in the lord and rejoice for the victory is yours so put on the armor the Lord has provided and place your defense in his unfailing care trust him for he will be with you in battle lighting your path to avoid every snare. Be strong, be strong, be strong in the Lord, and be of good courage, for he is your guide. Be strong, be strong, be strong in the Lord, and rejoice yours. Be strong in the Lord and be of good courage. Your 
mighty commander will vanquish the foe. Fear not the battle, for the victory is always his. He will protect you wherever you go. Be strong, be strong, be strong in the Lord. guide. Be strong, be strong, be strong in the Lord, and rejoice for the victory is yours. Amen. It's good. Now, Father in heaven, we <clears throat> bow before you in prayer as we come to the preaching of your word. I want to thank you today for the Bible. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to have copies of it in our hands today. Lord, we don't believe this is just the words of men or the words of a man. We believe it to be in truth the words of God. And Lord, I believe that all Scripture is profitable. Lord, it's helpful to us. And I pray, Lord, that you would use the Word of God to help us this morning. I believe that the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword. Use it that way in our midst here this morning. Minister to your people through your Word. And I pray that each of us would listen carefully to the truth as it's presented this morning. And Lord, I pray that you would work that which is well-pleasing in your sight in each one of our hearts. <clears throat> Bless our time together, please, and make it profitable. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. If your Bible's open to Luke chapter 7, about six miles south of Nazareth is this city called Nain. It's the only mention of it in the Bible. Uh, it's only, only uh, you wouldn't know that it existed. You would have never uh, heard of it, probably, had you not read about it in the Bible as we read about it this morning. Jesus comes to this city, as far as we know, recorded for us. It's the only visit he ever made to this city. Uh, the only time he's ever come here. And as he nears the city, it's close to sunset. Jewish cemeteries were always outside the city walls. Uh, that's where the cemeteries would be located. And the burial, the burials would always be at sunset. And so they would uh, carry the coffin uh, on the shoulders. The pallbearers didn't carry it like we do now. But up on their shoulders, they would carry three usually on each side, and they would carry the coffin out, a procession through the city, out of the walls of the city to the cemetery. In those days, the coffin would not have a lid, okay? Uh, the body, you, your, your face would be exposed. People could look at you, and, and they would carry it through. When they got to the cemetery, they would put the lid and secure the lid to the top of the coffin and then prepare the body for burial. The funeral procession the day that Jesus comes upon it is the funeral of a man. Uh, it does not say the age of a man. It just says he was a dead man, the only son of his mother. <clears throat> not only is he, he, she now lo losing or lost her only son, it lets us know that she has already lost her husband. And so now she's a widow, and now she's lost her only son. It's a very, very sad time. And by the way, even more so, understand the time in which they lived. Uh, if you don't have a husband to take care of you, you would hope to have a son that could take care of you and provide for you. It wasn't like she would just go out and get a job. Didn't do that in those days. And, and so she would have to rely on somebody to try to take care of her. And how would she live? And how is she going to get by? Maybe she doesn't even know how she's going to exist. And, and so it's a very sorrowful time. Uh, apparently, she's, she's very loved by the people in this city, a family, her and her son, that the, the people knew because much people were gathered. And so a lot of people came uh, to uh, the, 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 the funeral, as it were, and the procession as it leads out of the city. And this is what Jesus comes upon as he and his disciples approach the city. You can imagine the crowd of people and the procession and 
carrying the coffin up on their shoulders and Jesus and his men walk up and they see this taking place. And what, what uh, by the way, Jesus so is going to encounter death. And I want you to notice something this morning. This is just introduction. But there's, there, there's several times Jesus encountered death. And it's very interesting to take note. The, the first time is in John chapter 4. In fact, we'll come back to Luke 7. Look at this with me, will you? Uh, they're all pretty close. They're all in the Gospels. So look at John chapter 4. John 4 is where it's the nobleman's son. Notice verse number 46, John 4, verse 46. So Jesus came again into Cana of Galilee where he made the water wine, and there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. And when he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the what? Point of death. Here's the nobleman's son at the point of death. Is he dead? No, but he's close. Okay? He's at the point of death. And of course, he pleads for Jesus in verse 49 to come down ere my child die. And then Jesus simply says, Go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. And then his servants come and say, Thy son liveth. And he acquired of them the hour which he began to amend. And they said, Yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him, and the father knew it was the same hour in the which Jesus said to him, Thy son liveth and himself believed in his whole house. So we see the nobleman's son who is at the point of death. Look back before the Gospel of Luke in Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5, if you will, please. Mark 5 and verse number... Well, it, it kind of breaks up here a little bit. You have Jairus, the, who's a ruler of the synagogue, coming about his daughter. And he, he comes and a ruler of the synagogue in verse 22 of Mark 5. He saw him, he fell at his feet, and he besought him greatly. Jairus did, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. There's that phrase again. I pray thee, come and lay hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. And that's when Jesus goes with them, but there's a throng of people, and the woman with the issue of blood touches him. And everything stops, and he deals with her. We pick the story back up with Jairus in verse 35. While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter is what, church? dead okay thy daughter's dead why troublest thou the master any further and of course jesus continues to come and goes to where they are they laugh at him they he puts them all out verse 40 they laughed him to scorn but he had put them all out he took the father the mother the damsel them that were with him and then entereth into where the damsel was lying and he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her Talithi kumai, which is being interpreted, Damsel, I say unto thee, Arise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked, for she was of the age of twelve years. And they were astonished with a great astonishment. So first, the nobleman's at the point of death. His son is. And Jesus uh, says, No, your son lives. Now this girl died, but not for long. They're on the journey there. And so she was... Uh, at the point, she was at the point of death, and by the time Jesus is traveling there, she dies. So she's dead, but maybe only a matter of hours. Okay, And then Jesus brings her back to life. Now, you have the third time is the widow of Nain in the story we're looking at this morning, where the fella is dead, but, but again, uh, probably that day sometime where there, uh, it was Jewish custom that you would be buried on the day you die. Uh, they didn't have all kinds of embalming things and such, and you buried them by sunset every day. So uh, at least a day or so, or uh, maybe uh, under 24 hours, the man had been dead, and take him to the coffin. Who would mow the fourth time Jesus approached a dead body? Anybody remember? Lazarus, John chapter 11. Now, Lazarus, he's been dead how long? Four days. Remember, his sisters were concerned that he stinketh. Okay? After four days, well, men can stink without being dead four days. But um, uh, they were, she were concerned about that. And, and, and Jesus raised him from the dead. So those are the four times that Jesus encountered uh, the dead. And every time, he brought them back to life. Because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He told Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Okay? Uh, if you're consumed, listen, if you're consumed with thoughts about death 
and dying and destruction and, and all that suicidal. You know what? That's not of God. God's about life. Jesus said, I've come they might have life and you might have it more abundantly. It's all about life. But I want to take some, uh, you know, you, you, as you look at this, you think, you know, the only time this is mentioned in the Bible, why, why did the Lord put this here? What, what is it that we would glean from this story? Why would He want us to know about this widow woman who had an only son and Jesus brought him back to life? I mean, it's wonderful. We're glad. I'm happy for her. Don't get me wrong. But, but this was important enough. Of all the things that Jesus did that He said the world itself couldn't contain the books that it could be written, how come this made the grade? What did, what did this get in here for? I want to share maybe some, some helpful things or some lessons that might be a help to us as we look at this in Scripture. Let me give you number one. The first thought I had was this, that we all will have reason to weep in this life. We all will have reason to weep in this life. Here's a widow woman. Hey, she wept at some time because her husband died. Now she's weeping because her son has died. I think, I don't know what that's like. I thought about it, uh, Elda. I thought about it when Rick passed away, um, Jeff's brother. Mom and dad were here, you know, and, and while they were here, passed away. I don't know. One of the hardest things I think you'd ever go through, and I pray that, that I won't have to go through that, is to have one of your children die. You know, mom and dad are supposed to die before the children. That's the way it's supposed to go. It doesn't always go that way. It doesn't always work that way. But I can't imagine uh, having one of my children pass away or my grandchildren pass away. Uh, that would be great sorrow and certainly a time, a time for weeping. And, and, you know, Job, I'm going to read this verse to you from Job. You don't have to turn there. You can jot it down if you want. I believe it's Job 5, verse 7. <clears throat> Job said this, Yet man is born unto trouble as the sparks fly upward. He said, man, man is just born unto trouble. Everybody's going to have troubles. Don't, don't look, you know, you can... <laughs> I wonder how many people who, who thought at one time about... Man, how nice it'd be to live in Florida. <laughs> Maybe not so much this morning, huh? And they're, now, now they're, you know, they're, some of them could lose their home. You can't imagine the evacuating and then you come back and what you, what you had is not there anymore. It's hard to imagine. There'll be, there'll be uh, we don't know the severity of the storm. We don't know the cert. We don't know anything that'll go on there. But I tell you what, people in Houston have been through it. I'll guarantee you there's been many tears shed over, over things that have been lost and in and, and life that has been lost. I wonder how many nights Adam and Eve wept outside the garden after they disobeyed God. I wonder how many nights Moses wept on the backside of the desert when he spent 40 years back there. I wonder how many nights Samuel wept over his sons who didn't walk in his ways. And Israel said, give us a king like everybody else because your sons don't follow you. I know that David wept over Absalom. He cried. The Bible lets us know he did. I wonder how many nights David cried over Bathsheba and Uriah and he wept. I wonder, wonder how many times Job and his wife wept over losing all their children in one day. Your life, talk about your life changing. How'd you, like to, how'd you like to have ten caskets lined up across the front of the church? And all ten of your children gone in one day. Jeremiah was known as the weeping prophet. After Peter denied the Lord, he went out and wept bitterly. He wept. Paul wept for two years, he says, as I warned the Ephesians. He says, I warn you for the space of two years, night and day with tears. I wept when I told you the truth. There's always, listen, there's always going to be occasion to weep in this life. You're not going to get through without some sorrow. Whether it's, whether it's sickness, whether it's disease, whether it's sin, whether it's uh, moving, 
whether it's the death of loved ones, whether it is uh, a job change, whether it's losing to Oklahoma. <laughs> there were some tears in the stadium last night, probably. People cry over stuff like that. Silly. And it doesn't reach the magnitude of what life's really all about. And the sorrow that people have. Don't ever, don't ever think that you don't ever look at other people and say, Well, if I had their life, yeah, I'd 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 be a good Christian too. You have no idea. You have no idea what they're dealing with, what what the burdens they carry. You've heard me say this so many times. If if everybody just came forward today and you put all your problems and all your burdens on this altar and we could look at all of them, you know what you'd do? You'd come back up and you'd pick your own up and say, I think I'll just keep what I have. When you really could see what other people deal with. I can't tell people that sometimes. Sometimes people come to my office and they'll say, well, yeah, if I was like so-and-so, you know, they don't have any problems. Oh, and I know what they're dealing with. And I can't say anything. But I just say, you know what, you, you, you want to keep what you have. God, God gives us those. And listen, uh, we all have occasion to weep. At the grave of Lazarus, the shortest verse in the Bible, what's it say? Jesus wept. Jesus wept. And when he wept, the Jews said, Behold how he loved him. The Apostle Paul said, If all we have, listen to me this morning, if all you have is hope in this life, we are of all men most miserable. It says, if this all we had to look forward to, it's a pretty sad thing. This is a pretty sad thing. And that's why, by the way, that's why people cry over football games. Because that's what they live for. If that's all they live for, then, then their world came crashing down. You say, that's sad. It is sad. And they're, 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 it, it, it's, a, it's, it's things that we, 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 we begin to care about and we get entangled in that aren't going to matter in eternity. But there's always cause for weeping. But here's the good news. Number two, Jesus turns weeping into joy. Amen. Jesus turns weeping into joy. Jesus comes in there, there, that much people is there. I don't know how much of the city is there, but a lot of people are there. And Jesus walks right up to the coffin, and, 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 and he, the, the, the people stood still that were carrying him, and Jesus talks to the dead guy. And he says, young man, I say unto thee, arise. And, and, and you know what? He that was dead sat up and began to speak. Now, at that point, I think he probably lost the pallbearers. Okay? He would have lost me if I'd have been one. I'm out of here. Okay? Uh, I mean, if you do, if you just, just think about that sometimes. I've been to many a funeral, many a viewing. But if as you walked up to pay your respects, and you, you say, you know, boy, they, they look good. If the fellow sat up and said, well, thank you. <laughs> say, if there isn't a side door, I'll make one. <laughs> right? Can you imagine? I can't imagine that happening. It had to be pretty incredible. I mean, and, and I tell you what, while, while some people would have been scared, some people would have been, you know, freaked out, you know, and then run away, I tell you one who wouldn't have, and that would have been his mother. She'd have stayed there. She would not, she would say, my son is alive. Isaiah 61, verse 3 says that God uh, will give us, in fact, it's, it's the passage that Jesus quoted when he got to speak when he started his ministry. Isaiah 61. Verse number 3. You notice what the Lord said? He said, I'm to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Jesus said, I'm, I'm coming. And Jesus says, when I come, I'm going to give you beauty for ashes. 
Those, those, you just, hey, your dreams and your hopes and everything you wanted that have just got burned up and you got a pile of ashes, you bring those to me, Jesus says, and I'm going to give you something beautiful in its place. He gives the oil of joy for mourning and praise, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Over in Psalms, he said, weeping endures for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Psalm 126, 5 and 6. They that sow in tears will what? Reap in joy. You have a broken heart. And you know, when the heart breaks, or if God squeezes your heart, you know what happens? Tears come out your eyes. And tears come down your face. And it shows that, that the heart is broken. And, and if, if that's your case today, and, and God has given you that broken heart, and the tears flow down your cheeks very easily, Jesus wants to take those tears and take those, take those ashes of your life and say, let me make something beautiful out of this. He can do that. He's the, he's the Creator. You know what a creator does? He can make something out of nothing. And that's what he does for your life and for mine. They sang about it, I think, this morning in that song. God can make something out of nothing. He'll take the grief of a mother for her only son and give her the oil of gladness. He took her spirit of heaviness and put on a garment of praise. Imagine what her day ended up like. Started out mourning and, and, and sorrowful and unsure of the future. And how she'll live and what will I do and how do I go forward from here? To where she walked home as the sun was going down with her son. And says, I guess life will go on. I guess I'll be okay. Jesus takes care of it. He turns weeping into joy. You don't have Jesus. And listen, you, you weep and you're going to have sorrow in life and you deal with all the things that, that life brings and, 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 and the, the, the things of life come your way and you, it breaks your heart and you have tears and pain and sorrow and distress and stress and yet you say, I don't need Jesus. How's that working for you? No, I don't need Jesus, but I need that alcohol. Well, I don't need Jesus, but give me a pill. Well, I don't need I don't need Jesus, but but uh, put in there whatever you want. You're you're substituting something, but what you're looking for is Jesus Christ. That all those other things will never fill the void in your heart that you need that Jesus can only fill. The load of sin, the difficulties of life, are awful difficult to bear. And I tell you today what the songwriter said. If you're tired of the load of your sin, let Jesus come into your heart. If you desire a new life to begin, let Jesus come into your heart. Open the door and let Him in. Let me give you statement number three. I think the third lesson we learn here is, if you notice, after we receive life from the Lord, we should tell others about it. When Jesus said, Arise, the dead sat up and began to speak and he delivered him to his mother. Do you really think that man would go away and not tell anybody how he was still alive? Don't you, don't you think if anybody wasn't... A, think about the people who weren't able to get to the funeral. The next day, they're walking down the street and here comes this widow with her son and they look and say... I mean, can you imagine? And he comes up and says, Hey, hey, hey! Let me tell you what happened to me. Let me tell you what happened to me. That's what happens. People see Danny Wright. Someone grew up with him on the west side. They, they see Danny Wright now, and he's not the same Danny Wright he was then. You know what Danny Wright says? He says, Hey, let me tell you what happened to me. 
Some of you see people who used to know you and you're not the same person you were when they knew you. Hey, let me tell you what happened to me. When the lame man at the temple in Acts 3 got healed, when Peter said, Hey, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And the man went walking and leaping and praising God. Boy, he couldn't shut up about it so much that word traveled. And they ended up getting called before the authorities for it. When the maniac of Gadara was healed and, and delivered and saved, he took, remember, he wanted to go with Jesus. And Jesus said, no, you're not going to go with me. You go and tell what great things the Lord has done for you. And he did. He went out and published it everywhere he went. Hey, those of us who have Jesus Christ our Savior, those of us who say, yeah, He's turned my weeping into joy. He's given me the oil of gladness. He's given me the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Hey, we ought to tell it to everybody. I'll sing it, I'll shout it wherever I go. I want all to hear it. I want all to know the joy of salvation that makes my heart glow for I've been born again. That's what it's about. Hey, who'd you, who have you told about Jesus lately? Who have you told about Jesus lately? Who have you said, hey, let me tell you what's changed my life. Let me tell you about Jesus. And tell somebody. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Here's another great truth that I think the reason God put this in the Scripture is, number four, God sometimes will answer before we even ask. I mean, obviously, prayer is asking. And, and we're, we're to ask for what we need. That's God's method for us to receive things from Him. But aren't you glad sometimes God gives you things and you didn't even ask for? And He's good that way. The widow, as far as I know, at least what's mentioned here, doesn't say she was praying. I'm sure she probably prayed before her son died that he wouldn't die. But he died. And it's kind of like Mary and Martha, now that he's dead, what, what can you do now? Oh, Jesus can do a whole lot now. And sometimes, don't, don't get too hard on those folks. We're that way sometimes. We pray about something, but we say, well, Lord, you've got to do it by 5 o'clock on Friday, or you've got to do it by this Saturday, or it's no good. And we're telling God when the deadline is. We're telling God when it gets past this point, there's nothing you can do. Really? Are we telling God that once something's dead, He can't resurrect it? We're telling God that, that, that He can't do what seems impossible? Huh? That He doesn't control eternity? As far as we know, she never asked, but Jesus gave her a son back. As far as I know, the maniac Adair wasn't praying for Jesus to come deliver him. But he got delivered. And he got saved. If I remember... In the story of the feeding of the 5,000, there wasn't anybody in the 5,000 that said, we're begging Jesus to feed them. Jesus said, they shouldn't go away hungry. Let's give them something to eat. As far as I know, nobody asked for that. Same thing with the feeding of the 4,000. There are times that, that, that God just, just will pour it on. And, and give you blessing after blessing after blessing. And there's times, and, and I know I've talked to some of you before, and, and there's times you say, God's just been so good. Sometimes you just say, Lord, stop it a little bit. <laughs> it's just so good. And He keeps pouring it on. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. God's a, God's a good God and He does good things. I've heard that somewhere. Amen? I'm glad He answers sometimes even before we ask. Because He knows what we need. But also, let, let's remember this as we look at this raising of the widow's son. Number five, Jesus always arrives on time. Jesus always arrives on time. Think about this. Had He, had he come earlier, they, they might have been somewhere else in the city with the funeral procession and He'd have went to another part of the city and He'd never seen them. 
Had he come in a little bit later, they would have been passed and out to the cemetery and he'd have come into the city and maybe wondered, where is everybody? Nobody would have been around. He was at just the right time. Just exactly the right time as they were coming out of the city and they would meet them. He's always on time. Not, not always my time. But always on His time. And His time is always the right time. He's always on time. They were upset. Mary and Martha were upset that Jesus, if you'd have been here, He wouldn't have died. That's true, probably. Jesus could have healed Him right then, couldn't He? He did that often with people. Let me ask you a question. Would you rather say Jesus healed my brother? Or would you rather say Jesus raised my brother from the dead? People would come and say, hey, good to see you, Mary. Good to see you, Martha. Where's Lazarus? Oh, you want to see him for? Man, I never saw anybody who came back from the dead. I want to see him. That would have been a big deal, wouldn't you think? When Saul was on the road to Damascus, God said, it's time for you to be saved. And he spoke to Saul that day, and Saul received Christ as his Savior. Right at the right time. You know, you know why you got saved? Because it was the right time for you to be saved. And if you're here this morning and you don't know Christ as your Savior, it's the right time for you to be saved. Say, so how do you know that, Pastor? Because the Bible says now is the accepted time. Behold, today is the day of salvation. When if, if the words in your mind are, well, not today, not now, tomorrow, next week, when this happens, you know what? That's not God telling you that. That's not the Holy Spirit telling you that. You know what the Holy Spirit says? Today. Today. When you get right? Today. When you get saved? Today. When do you, when you do what God tells you to do? Today. Start now. <clears throat> Don't put it off. If you've never received Christ as your Savior, receive Him as your Savior today. Those are some lessons I think that we learn from why God put these seven verses in Luke chapter 7 and told us about a widow whose son was brought back to life. The only time it's mentioned in the Bible. I think we gleaned some good truths from that this morning. Let's pray together. Shall we, Father, take the truth today. Lord, I'm thankful that you included this in scripture it's helped us this morning lord i'm asking you to use your word in the lives of people that have listened this morning we have sorrow in this life we have weeping in this life we get heavy hearted in this life we have disappointments in this life Thank you that Jesus gives us joy. That he can give us beauty for ashes. The oil of gladness for, the, for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Thank you, Lord, that you often answer us before we ever call. Thank you that Sometimes you just you know what we need and you just send it our way. And we're humbled by your goodness to us. Thankful, Lord, that you're always on time. Help us never to think that anything is impossible for God to do. For with God, all things are possible. Lord, I pray that no one would put off what you're telling them to do today. They would realize that now is the time that you always operate in the present. And I pray if these need to make decisions this morning, they would make them today. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. I'm going to finish praying in just a moment and we'll have our invitation this morning. I wonder how many folks here this morning would say, Pastor, I realize that... <clears throat> There was a time in my life when I knew I was a sinner. 
And I knew that I needed a Savior. And I knew that Jesus Christ was the Savior I needed. And I trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior. And if I died today, Pastor, and you asked me, if I died today, why would I go to heaven? I'd only go to heaven because of what Jesus has done for me, and I'm trusting Him alone. And I've received His gift of eternal life. Pastor, here's my hand as a testimony. If that's your case, would you slip your hand up and say, Pastor, that's my case today. That's my testimony. All right, you may put them down. You here this morning would say, Pastor, I don't know that for sure. I don't know if I took my last breath right now, if I'd wake up in heaven or not. But I'll guarantee you this, my friend, you'd like to. You'd like to have that assurance. If you're this morning and say, Pastor, I'll be honest with you, I don't know if I died, I'd go to heaven. I don't have any assurance that I have eternal life. Would you let me pray for you this morning? Would you slip your hand up and say, Pastor, pray for me today. Pray for me this morning. God bless you. God bless you. Is there others today who join these? Say, pray for me today. Christian, how about you this morning? Did God speak to your heart today? Maybe some of you are going through a time of weeping and brokenheartedness and you need to say, Jesus, I need Jesus to bring me my joy. I need that oil of gladness for mourning. I need the garment of praise for my spirit of heaviness that I have. Only Jesus can do that. Maybe some of you have been Uh, You stop praying about something because you figure it's just too late. And this morning, God pricked your heart and said, it's never too late for me. If I need to do a resurrection, I can do a resurrection. God can do what seems impossible. Maybe God spoke to your heart today and you'd say, Preacher, the Spirit of God spoke to my heart today through the message. Pray for me this morning. Would you slip your hand up, Christian? Yes. Amen. Amen. You may put them down. In a moment, I'm going to pray and we'll have our invitation. If you're here today and you've never received Christ as your Savior, when I'm done praying, we'll stand to our feet. When we stand to our feet, the pianist will play, but the Bob will sing. All you have to do is slip from your seat, come down here to the front. We have people who have been trained. They'll take a Bible and they'll show you how you can know Jesus Christ as your Savior. How you can know when you die, you'll go to heaven. Come and let them show you. If you're here today and you're saved and you've never been baptized, you ought to come and say, you know what, I need to be baptized. That's obedience to Christ. If you're saved and you're baptized and you believe this is where you ought to belong, then you say, well, I want to belong to Bible Baptist Church and serve God here. Today's the day. Now's the time. God has just spoken to your heart and you need to, you need to pull back out a prayer you've given up on or a situation that you've stopped praying about. Why don't you start praying this morning? You just need to come and say, God, give me joy for my weeping. Give me, that, give me that oil of gladness for my mourning. Come and pray. Ask God to help you. Whatever it is that God's dealt with your heart about, respond to Him this morning. Heavenly Father, thank You for speaking to our hearts today. Thank You, Lord, for Your Word and the truths that we, we glean from it. And I pray, God, now that You would Use the message in the hearts of people and they would respond to what you've told them to do in their heart. May your will be done in these next few moments. And I'll thank you for it. With your heads bowed, you stand to your feet. As you stand to your feet, our pianist will play. As she plays, Brother Bob's going to sing. God has spoken to your heart. Respond to him this morning, will you please? That's right. Lord, have thy known way. Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me after Thy will. While I am waiting, yielded and still, have Thine own way, Lord, have Thine own way. Search me and try me, Master, today. Whiter than snow, Lord, wash me just now. As in thy presence, 
humbly I bow. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Wounded and weary, help me, I pray. Power of power, surely is thine. Touch me and heal me, Savior divine. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Hold o'er my being, absolute sway. Fill with thy spirit, till all shall see. Christ only always living in me. Father in heaven, we bow before you now in prayer and thank you, Lord, for this morning. Thank you for speaking to our hearts today. <clears throat> I want to thank you for the Bible. Thank you, Lord, for including this story of Jesus raising the widow's son to life. It's helped us today. It's challenged us. It's encouraged us. And I'm thankful it's in the Bible. And I pray, Lord, that you would be with the folks this morning now as we go our separate ways. Make us mindful that you go with us. And Lord, I pray that others would see Christ in us throughout the day today. Lord, I pray you'll bless the nursing home service this afternoon. I pray that you'll meet with the folks there. Pray for some of those folks that they've never been saved. May they open their heart to Christ today. Lord, bless the folks who minister there this afternoon. And then bring us back tonight for the evening services. And I pray, Lord, that it'll not just be the Lord's Day morning, but it'll be the Lord's Day. And give us a wonderful Lord's Day. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. Brother Bob. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by his blood. Jointed with Jesus as we travel this side. For I'm a part of the family. The family. 530. Choir 530 tonight, all right? 530. Choir 530 tonight, all right? <laughs> 